Hollywood. There are these rules that guys have. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's never cheating when you're in a different area code, not to mention a different state. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones on this Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's one 800 Six six. This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Mister Likas. What's going on? Not much. How you doing? All right. Here's the deal. I um I lead somewhat of a of a double lifestyle. I work at a professional environment, a hospital, an HMO that to be remain uh, remain unnamed. However, I got kind of a party lifestyle outside of that. I was on tour. I was in a band. I was on MTV and all that. And I quit that to work at this hospital. Anyways. I'm on my way to the company party, and I'm bringing... The com- wait, 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 the company party? Wait, what's this party for? It's, it's the quote-unquote holiday party. The Another one of the companies did the holiday party after the holidays are over. It's January 9th, right? Wait, what's going on? Yeah, I, I guess it's to save some money, or <laughs> maybe they're on some different kind of calendar, but I don't know. It's crazy, isn't it? Nice. Yes, yes, it um, is. Okay, so with that being said, there's going to be tons of doctors, pharmacists, you know, professional environment, whatever. The girl I'm bringing is going to be turning heads like none other. She's got like a full arm full of tattoos, crazy hair. Uh, she's, she's like a, you know, a model. I don't know if you ever heard of like the Suicide Girls, like kind of something like that. And right. she's a good, great looking girl. I just don't know. I'm, I don't even know why RSVP did this thing. I don't even want to go anymore. So, I I, I, don't know. I wouldn't go. <laughs> I I am done with company uh, Christmas parties, holiday parties, what have you. As I've said, no, you know I wish I wish I called you sooner because now I'm really uncomfortable. Either I'm going to end up getting plastered at the bar, or I, I don't want my employer knowing what I do in my free time or who I do. Exactly. That that's exactly why I keep this double lifestyle. I go to work, you know, prim and proper. Long sleeve shirt. I don't have any tattoos. You know, really cordial with all the you know fellow employees and whatnot. However, this is the guy coming out party, if you will. I I don't know. I think everyone's going to be like, this guy has something else going on. And yeah, but why? I mean, you, you, to me, you have a job so you can make a living. And the way you make a living is by, you know, just by staying on the down low, not making waves. Uh, you certainly don't want people knowing about your private life, kind of people you date, what your drinking habits are, your pot smoking habits. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't. Yeah, I, I think do. I think that's a bad idea. You, so? <laughs> you want to go to a party? Uh, call a friend. But uh, why the company Christmas party? These are all a bunch of strangers who you would not be socializing with unless they worked in your office. Yeah, that's true. Definitely true. I'm the youngest one too, and so everyone's going to be like, Whoa. "The minute you, the minute you leave that company, you'll never see most of those people ever again." So, why is it so important to go to the Christmas party with them? You know, it's it's not very important. You know, it's I was just calling for your your advice because I'm on my way to this thing right my now. My advice so. is make a U-turn. Tell them you're sick, got the flu. You're going to spend well, the weekend in bed, recover, be back on Monday. They just saw me at work. Ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I got, got the yeah, I got the. You got uh, the chills. You had to go right home. I got the Jose Cuervo. I got a yeah, <laughs> with the sombrero. You don't want to be. And by the way, I I I love a good drink like anybody. You don't go talking about your tequila drinking habits and stuff with people at your office. Oh, uh, definitely. Well, I can I can keep it under control. You know. I, no, no, I no, no, no. It's not the drinking keeping it under control. It's the talking about the drinking. Yeah. All right, Mr. Likas. Well, I'm trying to, you know, you, you, you did your thing. You did music videos. You're on MTV. Wonderful. Now you're in an office. And I'm telling you, it's a different world. And if you start walking in there with girls with tattoos and start drinking heavily at a Christmas party, it's going to affect your ability to be at that company for a period of time. All right. I think I'll make it a blockbuster night. Sounds good to me. Thanks for the call. Good luck. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to um, hmm, Carl on the Tom Likas show. Uh, yes. Hey, Tom. How's it going today? It's going great. 
Good. Um, I am. Uh, I've been listening to you since uh, 1999. Wow. Yeah, a long time, and I uh, love your show. Uh, I am. You are actually one of the reasons why I decided to try my uh, hand uh, at my own show. I'm putting together uh, my own show, and um, and. You know, the reason why I'm calling is not to promote the show or anything like that, because I know that that's not not cool. The reason why I'm calling is because I, you know, as far as I need your help, um, I want to, uh, how can I say, as far as attack my former employers and the experiences that I've had, um, this is going to be like a financial talk show. And, uh, you know, as far as I want to, you know, use different, uh, as far as the names, you know, and scenarios and things of that sort. What would, let me ask you a question. What yeah. would mentioning the names of your former employers do to advance your cause? What would that do? That's a, um, you know what, Tom? That's a very good question. I guess it, were, it really wouldn't, really wouldn't, uh, you know, uh, do anything. Uh, I mean, all you're, the... do, all you're looking to do is get revenge, <laughs> and, and yeah. one of one of two outcomes can happen. One okay. is you're on the internet, and so few people are listening that nobody who could sue you will ever hear about it, and therefore you really wouldn't have gotten revenge. Or if lots of people. Uh, know to log on and hear it, especially anybody you used to work with. Somebody might tell your employers about it. And if they do, your employers have attorneys. Attorneys who will request tapes of what you did. Okay. And you could end up being sued. Well. You could tell the same story if the purpose is telling a good story without naming the company or any of the people. Okay. I have made references to previous employers on the air who did outrageous things to me, but I have never gone on the air and named the people or named the radio stations or the companies I worked for because those people and those companies are litigious. They have attorneys, and they might sue. And that's the reason why I'm calling you. Obviously, I don't want to get sued. Um, um so I mean, you know, the thing is that remember so that what you remember you, what you were going to say about, and I don't know all the specifics of your situation, but right, right, anything you're going to say is your opinion, all right, and not a fact. Okay, <laughs> as much as you see it as a fact, ah. it's your opinion, and you've got your opinion, and they've got their opinion. Okay, and their attorney can make sure that you can't express your opinion. I see. I see. They can so, shut you down. They can sue you for everything you've got. Whereas, if the important thing is the story itself, you could tell that story. Okay. You just don't have to say who you're talking about. Okay. So, now, so, many times I've yeah. told stories about previous employers going back, you know, 15, 20 years, whatever. Okay. And if those people were listening, they know who I'm talking about. I see. But nobody else does. And that's the reason why you can't get sued. Well, because I never mentioned what company I was talking about or what, what individuals I was talking about. How about if it's true? And as, as you know, from what I understand... Let me, let me give you an example. This. Let's say it's true. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And let's say they file a lawsuit and they say you slandered them. Right. Okay. Well, does it matter if it's true? You know who's going to decide if it's true? A jury. And that's going to be after you've hired an attorney and had to pay to go to court. I see. So, is it worth it to you to pay the legal expenses if they decide that you're an annoyance, that you're going to hurt their company by saying these things in public? Is it worth it to pay legal expenses and go up against a company that's bigger than you? Correct. I'm asked that's a question. Well, no, uh, no, it's not. I mean, okay. it's, it's it's not at all. So my answer to you is, if it's a compelling story, tell it. Okay. But it's not necessary to say what company you work for or the names of the people involved. Okay, I will. I will do that. And uh, 
And don't be cutesy about it. Don't say, I work for an airline. I can't say which one, but it's, you know, in the United States of America. Don't be doing stuff like that. It's the same thing, and they will nail you for it. Okay. So so as long as I'm vague and... and you don't uh, have to be vague about the story. Just don't say the name of the company. Don't hint at the name of the company. Okay. Don't try to slide it out in code. <laughs> okay. Just tell, don't be cute. Tell the story. Okay. But don't use a radio show, whether it's on the internet or a radio station or a newspaper column, whatever. Don't use it to try to slander someone or to get revenge. It's not worth what can happen to you. This is the reason why I'm calling and getting the guidelines. I, I'm new at this particular deal, and, and you're the man. Let, at me, this, let me tell so, you something. Uh, Over the years, I've been sued twice. Once by a... They were both frivolous lawsuits. Once by a listener who claimed that I gave her post-traumatic stress disorder by mentioning her name on the air. Okay. And she sued me for $2.3 million. Wow. And another by an individual who lied to get on the air, lied about his name, lied about his age, lied about everything. And then when he got on the air uh, and I hung up on him, he claimed he was a victim of age discrimination. Was was one of these the 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 uh, Juno the uh, Juno uh, Correct. Or the Alaska case? That's right. Okay. Yeah, I, I heard about that. You was talking about that a few years ago. Now, is it worth it uh, to have to go through something like that? Let me tell you what I had. To, just because I mentioned this woman's name on the air. Okay. Here's, by the way, I won. <laughs> here's what I had to do. I had to give depositions, which went on all day for two days. I had to fly to Juneau, Alaska and live there for two months while the case was pending. I was on trial and I had to do my radio show every day from Juneau, Alaska in the dead of winter. Mm. I will tell you, it wasn't worth it. Well, um, I will, I'm writing this down right now as we speak, taking notes uh, as we're talking and I will not hint at any names, and uh, is that, I mean, you're, you know, huge in this industry, and I um, I don't want to go there. And by uh, the way, most of the people who know who these people are probably won't be listening to your internet radio show anyway. Right. So you're not going to get the satisfaction of having gotten back at your former employer, because no one's going to know you did it. And in fact, if they did know you did it, they might sue you. And it's not worth it at all. You're never going to get the satisfaction you're looking for. Uh, the best way to get revenge against a former employer, come back bigger and better at your next gig. And I intend to do that. Good luck, Carl. Appreciate the call. Tom. 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 Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones at 1-800-5800-TOM. Don't forget, our Saturday show tomorrow from 2 until 6. 2 until 6 p.m. tomorrow on 97.1 FM Talk here in Southern California. And if you can't listen to us on the radio, listen to us online at blowmeuptom.com. Click on the Listen Live button tomorrow between 2 and 6. We're now here six days a week with FM Talk, six days a week on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. If you're listening in Portland, Oregon, this has absolutely no impact on you whatsoever. No, unless you're listening online. Okay. I will always ask you how bad things are getting. Oh, things are getting bad. <laughs> uh, here's some more trouble now. Hearst Corporation has put Seattle's oldest newspaper, the Seattle Post Intelligencer, up for sale and said that if it can't find a buyer... Within the next 60 days, the paper will likely close or, at best, continue ex to exist only online. Oh, boy. If it does become an Internet-only operation, the PI, as the paper is known locally, would have a, quote, greatly reduced staff. 
publisher will be Perez Hilton, probably. So uh, that's uh, a statement from Hearst, by the way, a major media company that also owns TV stations, other newspapers and magazines, including Cosmopolitan. Steve Swartz, the head of Hearst newspaper division, broke the news to employees in a meeting today. He said, in no case will Hearst continue to publish the PI in printed form once the 60 days are up. So 60 days from today, that's it. No more PI in Seattle. Says here, Seattle is one of the two major cities on the verge of losing its second daily newspaper as the industry tries to pull out of a tailspin brought on by falling circulation and advertising revenue. Denver's Rocky Mountain News recently put itself up for sale in the face of steep losses and could close if a buyer isn't found soon. Hearst said it's not considering buying the Seattle Times, the city's other daily paper, which has handled non-news functions for the PI since 1983. The paper has had operating losses since the year 2000, including $14 million last year. So you can probably buy the PI for like a buck, long as you're willing to incur losses of $14 million a year. Holy cow. <laughs> Just amazing. Things just keep getting worse and worse and worse. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Let's say hello here to uh, Roy. Roy is listening to our online stream in Chicago. Roy, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Great. Um, I'm a 21-year-old college student. Wait a second. Are, are you on, wait, wait, wait. Are you on a speakerphone? Uh, I'm on a I'm on a headset. Why don't I get back on my phone here? Yeah, why don't we do that? Sounds terrible. You there? No, I left the room. Oh, uh, okay. All right, I'm a 21-year-old college. Still student. sounds like you're on a speakerphone. Weird. Hold on. Uh. Echoey. Uh, I'm not though. You're not. Nope. The room echoes. I'm not in an echoey room. Uh, I got my computer off. Do you have any furniture or carpeting in there? Yeah, yeah. The room's room's full of furniture. I right, just check him. All right, go ahead, Roy. I uh, I'm a 21 year old college student. Absolutely no debt. Um, not not a penny. I've got about 25 grand. I want to invest it somehow. Make get some uh, get a little bit of interest on it. What uh, what do you suggest, Tom? Well, first of all, uh, as I always say. Uh, I imagine that's all the money you have saved in the whole world. Yes. And that money needs to be your emergency fund. You don't have gotcha. money to invest. You, that needs to be in case you lose a job or lose your source of funding. Uh, do you have a job? Do you go to college? What are you doing? I'm uh, I'm going to college right now. I go to DePaul University. Yeah. I'm a full-time student. Uh, I do not have a job. So. All right. Well, you need that money to be liquid. You need that uh, available to you. Gotcha. And right now, nothing is paying interest, but, um, you know, the most important thing is that you have money in case of emergency. What did you invest in that money in, I don't know, bonds, and then you couldn't sell your bonds in time to pay a bill? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly, because they're most, what, five, ten years, stuff right. like that. So you're right where you should be. No debts, low expenses, some money in the bank in case of emergency. And you should add to that amount if you possibly can. Right, Okay. What do you think? Uh, what do you think is a good number for somebody like myself? Well, to... the, the good number for you is to figure out what you spend in a month on necessary expenses. Gotcha. Then multiply it by at least six, and I would say twelve. Yeah, I've heard you telling people twelve. Yeah, because right now, look at the economy. Normally, I'd say six, but right now, you can be out of work for a year. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to think about getting a master's degree after this because the economy's in the crapper, and I figure, well. You know, uh, you, you gotta gotta go as far as you can uh, with education these days. I'm, uh, I'm studying business, so I'm not a I'm not a moron studying you know fine art from the from the 13th uh, century Europe. So <laughs> yeah, I love those people who are going to college. Yeah, I'm going to college. I'm studying poetry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm studying Sanskrit, a 5,000 year old yeah. language. Which, this is like uh, great, no use. This is like Great Depression too. What are you doing studying poetry? <laughs> I know it's true. <laughs> Oh, by the way, why do you call Portland, Oregon, Porkland? What's uh, what's up with that? Have you ever uh, been there? 
No, I've never been up there. One look at the women there will tell you why I call it Portland. <laughs> oh man, Portland! Portland has the largest. This is this is absolutely true. Portland has the largest number of strip clubs per capita of any metropolitan area in the United States. That's really weird. I thought they were real. I thought they were really weird up there. I didn't know that would be. I didn't know that'd be some up there. Oh no, no, no! The, the, the people in Portland are not weird. We we love going there. We love spending time there. Uh, you know uh, the micro brews and uh, the uh, you know because of the rain the uh, uh, they've got all these great indoor spaces to hang. I think it's fantastic. And if you like outdoor uh, activity of any kind, which most people in Chicago don't, that's why they live in Chicago. Uh, well, you know, I, I live in the Bay Area for a little while, so. All right. Well, I if you like out, you know. if you like outdoor activity, I mean, Oregon is spectacular for that kind of thing. It really is. But, you know, you got a lot of earth mamas out there who, uh, you know, really they weigh 180 pounds and they got the little tube top of their guts hanging out in the summertime. There's a lot of, people, a lot of like, a lot of, lot of leftover hippies up there, too, isn't there? Well, there's a certain number of leftover hippies. Also, the, the whole Pacific Northwest has a certain amount of that. Yeah. Uh, but some of them uh, just and uh, become uh, very productive members of society. Look at Matt Groening, for example. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, he's, his show has been, what, 17 years now? Right, and, uh, you know, by the way, did you know the characters on The Simpsons are named after streets in Portland? I did not know that, wow. <laughs> so people in Portland know the inside joke. That's funny. Oh, well, yeah. All right, Roy, got to move, but, uh, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing. You're on a good track. Thank you, thank you. Take me out Halle Berry style. Halle Berry style. Here you go, Roy. <laughs> Like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. Ask her by name. Four to five dentist surveyed. Recommend the Tom Likas Show for patients who choose shows. That's right. Here we are, charter commercial breaks, more calls, take them faster. Let's just jump right in here. Say hello to uh, Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello there, Tom. Hello. Hey, I got to tell you, I'm a short-time listener, first-time caller. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I wish I'd been listening to you a lot longer. I'm, uh, your wisdom has really improved my life. Cool. Yeah, so. I'll get right to it. I got a question. Um, you know, I've made mistakes in the past. Obviously, like I said, I wasn't a listener I'm trying to move forward and be normal with my life again. So I got unlucky in the past and I caught an STD, got genital warts. And here's the dilemma. When you don't have a breakout, when it's dormant, it can't be spread to other people. They just cannot get it, you know, because it's spread by skin to skin contact. So my question is, you know, when it comes down to having sex with a girl, using protection, and I'm, you know, dormant, and I'm not contagious, do I sing her my sob story and tell her, or, you know, I want to know about the morality of this. Well, I don't comment on morality, and the reason is because, as I've said on this program in my life, I've been a very bad boy. Okay. I'm not really in a position to comment on morality. I comment on pragmatism. Okay. All right, and I'm just going to tell you two things. Both are true. One is, if you give that to someone and they figure out you gave it to them, they can sue you. Wow. That's true. Whether okay. they'll win or lose is all of the question. Because they'd have okay. to prove you gave it to them. And that's right. that's hard to prove. Uh, the other thing is uh, that uh, people don't tell you what they have and don't have. How many women have ever, you? I don't know how many women you've had sex with, how many of them have told you what STDs they have? Well, I probably wouldn't be in this position. And you, right, and you probably assume that they're all clean. Uh, it was, you know, it's something that's always in the back of your mind, but being young and naive and stupid, we uh, like to lie to ourselves. <laughs> well, I'm telling you <laughs> that uh, uh, the, the, the likelihood that someone will be able to catch you is slim. Okay, but it well, exists. Yeah, I, hate you. I hate you because all the all the answers you always give are you know whether they're 
like you said, I'm moral or not. They're, 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 they're the correct answers. That's why I live by your 101 now. So that's why I'm coming in. I just believe in being uh, pragmatic about things. Okay. And that's kind of like a pragmatic meaning, like, you know, do what feels good. That's not so much that. That's that's not being pragmatic. Pragmatic means uh, do what you can legitimately uh, uh, expect to be able to do without suffering consequences. Ah, all right. Okay. Cool. So, safe as I can. So, good luck to you. All right. Thanks, brother. All right. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. Stephen on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, Dad, how you doing? Doing okay. Uh, first time caller, long time listener, but this is actually the second time we've spoken. I uh, have a little side job up at uh, Hugh Hefner's pad, and uh, I believe it was 2006. I opened up your car door, called you Dad, you called me son, I shook your hand. You're an absolute gentleman, sir. I love that. Uh, I'm calling. Uh, I heard a couple other people calling about uh, uh, language discrepancies that some people have, and I uh, recently got a... Uh, performance evaluation uh, where I was put on 90 days probation, which I received on Christmas Eve, by the way, so that was very nice of them. <laughs> and uh, it lists a couple of things that I needed to improve about my job, which I was totally valid. But the last sentence uh, in here, and uh, our, our office manager is not very good with the English, uh, it says here that if you do not improve or corrective, these action will be necessary and may be terminate. <laughs> so they're giving me a performance evaluation about what I need to fix, and for the love of God, couldn't they at least, you know, something with, you know, correct English? <laughs> correct? <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, it happens, I guess, but, you know, I'm shrugging it off, laughing it off, and I'm just going to keep doing better at my job and show them that I can uh, man up. Well, good for you. Steve, Steve, good story. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, I love it when the people who are your boss know less than you do. I love that. I mean, uh, many years ago, I had many bosses like that. Let's say hello here to James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Um, Got to start off really quick. Uh, we listen to your show at work, me and a couple of buddies at work every day, and we love when people call and, uh, and request uh, blo uh, take me out tribal style. But when we heard uh, Latino style for the first time today, we couldn't uh, help but uh, laugh uh, so hard at the office. It was pretty funny. So that's a pretty great one. I think that's our, our new favorite one there. But uh, have a have a question. I'm. Uh, I've been. I live in LA. I've been working uh, for a job for about two years, and um, I'm looking to relocate in this uh, in this day with everything that's going on financially and uh, and everything. So, I'm looking to move to Portland. I don't have a job secured. I don't have a job lined up. Um, I really want to do it. I want to pursue some other other things there, but uh, I don't know. I, I just wanted to. You give such great advice to everyone. I figured I'd maybe give it a shot. Well, I See wouldn't go anywhere without a job in my back pocket. Let's start with that. Okay. Ever. I, I've uh, I've tried applying there, but it's just it's not working out. They well, really then, need. Then you shouldn't yeah. be going anywhere. Huh. I just. I, I'll I, make I, it real I simple don't. for you. you. You don't leave until you have a job. Yeah. Um, why? Gotta, why are you in a uh, rush? Do you have a girl there or something? Probably. No. no it, why it's Portland of all places? Well, I've got a, a couple. I've got a cousin there who's uh, who I know I can stay with at first and make things the transition easier. And then I'm just I've, I've never lived anywhere else other than you know in the same place here in LA. And I'm just kind of looking for something new, something. Uh, right, but you need to get a job first. Right, right. Well, I don't know. I was just wondering if maybe just kind of go out on a limb and just do it. How you know? I yeah, know it's no, you don't go out on a limb. Yeah, that's how you end up broke. Right, right. Why would you want to go out on a limb? Yeah, there's no real reason to. I was, right. I don't know. I'm just kind of so find a job and then go. But yeah, but don't be uh, don't be going first. Don't put the car before the horse. All right. I I was completely going to do it. I was just going to drop everything one day and just take off. But 
I don't know. I guess, I mean, you're, you're, you're right. And uh, so I guess uh, this is where I asked you to blow, uh, not blow me up, but uh, take me out Latino style. Latino style. Okay, here you go. Latinos, you shut up! It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Joe on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing, baby? Doing okay, Joe. Sounding great. Sounding great tonight. All right. I just got a house. I did it like you said. Ten years. I planned. I'm going to be there for ten years. Lost the last one, of course, obviously. <laughs> and the flat screen. And all the toys. But put 20% down. I'm real happy. Now, you were talking earlier. You've heard about a 52-inch LCD. Yes. Yes. I want to go get that baby. All right. No, well, I don't. I don't do any free advertising. This is somebody who should be buying advertising on uh, on our show and doesn't. I agree. If well, they did, I would give the information that. out, but they don't. <laughs> okay, I appreciate uh, your uh, advice, and then I've been living by it for the last six years, and it's really working out well. Well, I'm glad it is. Are you getting more ass than a toilet seat, Joe? Absolutely. And I'll never do it again. Sounds There's good to me. Absolutely no reason, guys. Just pay attention, and I and I pass it on to whoever's not uh, smart enough to turn on your station. You are right about that. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom. <laughs> The Tom Like a Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. It's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Don't forget our Saturday show tomorrow, 2 to 6. Tomorrow, 2 to 6. Get out here. It's Monday through Friday from 3 to 8 p.m. as you head home. And Saturdays from 2 until 6 p.m. Pacific Time. On 97.1 FM Talk and at BlowMeUpTom.com. And if you're a real glutton for punishment, how about Sunday, 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific Time, The Tasting Room with Tom Likas. That's Sunday, 5 till 7 on 97.1 FM Talk and BlowMeUpTom.com. 1-800-5800-TOM. Patricia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I love you. I've listened to you for years. Why, thank you. Okay, we just have a problem between my sister and I. Okay, she said that it's okay and a guy should accept that she has guy friends. But I'm telling her that no guy wants to be your friend. He wants something more, right? Yes. Okay. So what can I do? Because she she's had a situation where her boyfriend pays the rent and she invites guys over. But they're not, you know, it's an ex-boyfriend. What? And I and, and I tell her, why jeopardize this? They're just friends coming over. And um, I tell her, no guy wants to just be your friend. And those guys are not coming over to be friends. Exactly. They're coming over to expect something, right? That's right. Yeah. And I tell her, then she says, no, I, I just know when, you know, he if he's ever going to come over, I know when it's, you know, I have a feeling of, of when he comes. And I said, he can come unexpectedly. And what what are you going to do? What is he going to think when, he, when they're there? And she says, it's okay. And I tell her she's crazy. Why give up? Why risk losing that? That's absolutely right. <laughs> I guess I get that from you from all the years I've listened to you. I mean, uh, really, if, 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 if her boyfriend really means something to her, uh -huh. she should stop playing with fire. Yeah, he, she lives in a really good area. He's paying her rent, everything for, you know, she lives there by herself, her little boy. And she thinks it's okay to have them come over once in a while. And I tell her, you're nuts. He's going to find out. He's going to, you're going to be out on the street. That, I mean, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He doesn't know this? No, he doesn't. Why he not? Doesn't. Well, it's her, it's her baby's dad. It's, oh, they're no. They're no longer no. together. Oh, my. Yeah. God, no. Yeah. And he said, as long as I pay your, you know, as long as I'm paying your rent, I'm expecting you to be, you know, I don't want guys coming over. As soon as I find out a guy comes over, that's it. That's outrageous. And she, why she would she run that it. risk of lo Why would she run that risk of losing what she has? Because she says that she has a feeling. She says I have a feeling. I know when he'll come, and I know, 
God's watching over me and, and what does God happen. what does God have to do with it? Well, I that's what I tell her. She's just weird. She's nuts. She's right here with me if you want to talk to her. Sure, put her on. Okay. Hello? Why are you doing this? What do you mean? Uh, you know what I mean. Why are you doing this? But they're just friends. No, it doesn't matter. You know what? You have everything taken care of. The least you can do is live up to what you promised. By the way, God's not watching over a liar, and you are a liar. <laughs> You no, are I, you are a liar. Friends. You are a liar. He said oh. you can stay here as I just don't want guys coming over, and you agreed to that. But see, you agreed to that, didn't you? Yeah, a lot. See, you agreed to is, that, didn't you? No, I didn't because I. So told you him told that. him I'm going to have guys over all the time whenever I feel like it, right? No, I didn't. Let's tell call him, that, him right. But... Why not? <laughs> okay, look. I, I, don't get I don't have girlfriends. I don't have girlfriends. I get along with guys. I don't I, care. Let's call him right now and tell him if, if if you're such an honest person. Let's call him right now. I'm an honest person, though. I've had Let's call life. him up and tell him. I don't have girlfriends. I don't so know So let's do. call I'm... him up and tell him. If it's so innocent, let's call him right now. Off the it air. Is innocent. Off the air. We'll take his phone number. <laughs> and, and, and then we will call him, and we'll put you on the air with him, and, and we can discuss it. No. That's because, because you are a liar. So I'm going to be, like, uh, friendless for the rest of my life. No, for, but, uh, you know? why, why do you have to lie? I'm not lying, though. Yes. I have friends. I don't deny not that. Not hide. First of all, he said the conditions for staying there were not having guys over. He said that to you. You accepted his offer to stay there. So that means you accepted the conditions. And now you want to hide the fact that you're sneaking guys into his apartment. They're not just guys. I mean, I, I don't like care. I don't. He wants to know about the guys. And you know what? We, if we call him right now, we can show how honest you are. Well, if you think it'd be a good idea that me and my son would be sleeping in the street, then yeah, we could call him. Well, why, but why would you? Why would, if, if everything is okay and you're so above board, why would that happen? Because I'm not screwing them. That's I'm not the point. You lied to get a place to live. No, I didn't. Yes, no. you did. Let's tell the truth right now. Let's call him right now and tell the truth. I've lived there four and a half years. Let's call him right now and tell the truth. No. I'm Why not? not well, we'll whether call him right what now. What if they're transsexual? What if they're transsexual? Doesn't like matter what they right? are. You, then there's no reason not to tell him. No, no, no. Because, like, because you're friends. a liar. Because you no, are a liar. You are a liar. You are deceitful. You are doing this behind his back. You're taking advantage of his 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 very generous offer to live in his place. And, and I you love are, men. So and you're, me. I, no, the point, but you lied if you get a place to live and not to have to pay for it. You're a liar. I was I was faithful to him for. 40, I don't four and care years. what you were. You are a liar. No. Yes. I love men. And any man Then let's the call thing. him and tell him that and then be honest. I I love men and Great. I can't let's change. call him and tell him how much you love men. <laughs> let's tell him right now. What if I had a female over? Like, we're not I talking about the females. We're talking about the men who come over. Well, he like, doesn't mind if you have females over. He doesn't want men in his apartment. What's the difference between a man that, and a woman? Why, why didn't you ask them? him that before you moved in, Lock, Stock, and Barrel? Because you are a liar, and you want him to pay for everything. No, now, let's, because I want to have a life. Well, have let's call life. him right now. I haven't had a social life for four and a Fine, half years. Fine, then you can explain that to him when we call, in the name of being as honest as you are. Well, I am because I haven't. Well, then, I, then fine. Well, but, but, but you also haven't told him that you are not living up to what the the bargain was. I think he just didn't like the idea that if I was having someone over, that I'd sleep with that person. I don't care what his reason is. It's his apartment, and he has the right to say what goes in his place, not you. <sighs> so let's call him up and let's straighten this out. So that you can be completely honest and live there with a clear conscience. I have a clear conscience. No, no well, that's because you're a liar and you feel good about no, being a liar. I, no, I have my booty call and I go to his house. Oh, and you have a booty call and you go to his house too. That's, does he yeah. know about that too? 
that's none of his business. That is none, oh, none of his business. Oh, that's none of his business. What about the people who are coming into his place? What if somebody stole something from his place? What if somebody got hurt there and then sued him? They're decent people. They're oh, not the kind of people, they would never like, do that. Yes, of course. They're yes, very of course. well educated. You're people. a liar. I mean, I you're an attention like, whore. You're a little brain. baby who had a baby. How old are you, Stud, darling? <laughs> 26. 26. And you had a baby. And yet you, you got knocked up. You had a bastard child. And then on top of that, you're, you're just a big attention whore. No. Yes. I'm, yeah, yeah, no. Yes, uh, you are. What makes me an attention whore? The fact that you need to have men coming over at all hours of the day. I get along with men, but I don't. I have don't care. Friends. They go to go to Starbucks. I go somewhere else. I got backstabbed by you, my friend. You go somewhere else. You don't bring them to his apartment. That was my not the agreement you had. A female, she backstabbed Liar, back. liar, liar! You're a liar. Ten, ten you years. You are. You are dishonest. And that's what, what I don't like about you. You are dishonest. Yes, you are. You don't have no idea who I am. Your own friend told me that you're a liar. My sister? Is that your sister I was talking to? Yeah. 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 She told me you're a liar, too. No. That's I'm why not she a liar. called in. That's why she called in. No, I'm not a liar. Well, I'll tell you what. Put her on, and I'll get your uh, boyfriend or your ex boyfriend, your <laughs> baby daddy's phone number from her, and then we'll call him right now. Tom, I still love you. Okay? That's great. All right, put him I on the phone. I still love you, and I still listen to you every day. <laughs> okay, all right. Now put put your sister back on the phone. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Now wait, wait, I'm going to put you on hold. You're going to give us the uh, the baby daddy's phone number. I don't know it though. You don't know it? No. Uh, are you on her phone or your phone? This is my phone. Oh, too bad. Well, maybe you can get yeah. it, and then we can call him up. But I I wouldn't get thrown out though. Well, I mean, why would you think she'd get thrown out for being a well, liar? Because, because, no, because he is the typical macho Mexican. For being Mexican. a dishonest attention whore? No. All her, look, it's the same friend that she's talking about. I've, it's, he's my friend as well. We met him on the same day. But he, in the back of his head, has the thought that one day she's going to give in to him. Right. But, but she won't. But yeah, she won't. Well, we don't know that. She has a booty call. And when that runs out, who knows what will happen. No, this guy, I wouldn't even do, Tom. Come on, he's he's not very good looking. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, our email address is my name, Tom, at blowmeuptom.com. Don't forget, you can hear us tomorrow from 2 until 6 p.m., 2 until 6. Tune into our Saturday show. The Tom Likas Show.